This is your boy Leon D, and I'm here to tell you that I'm going to tell you what I know and what I don't know. If I don't know it, I'm going to be honest and tell you about it. But what I do know, I really do know. There are things I'm going to tell you that may apply to you and things I'm going to tell you that may not apply to you. I'm going to tell you things I like and things I don't like. And here's the deal. You can deal with it or you can let it go. It don't matter to me, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. What we talk about on this video is food. We talk about a lot of food. Now, let's get to the show. This is DJ Leon D. You know, I'm going to show you something and, and, and you got to take it to heart. Now, the video I'm showing you is me cleaning my grills. Now, let me tell you something. A lot of you people, actually about 99%, about 99% of you do not clean your grills or your smokers. Now, I'm going to tell you about me. I clean mine at the end of each season and at the beginning of the next season before I use them and after I winterize them and get them ready for the winter. <clears throat> now, here's what's bothered me. I went to a friend's house and he decided that before Easter, he wanted to, um, you, know, you know, use a smoker. Now, he opened the smoker up and now all I see is uh, swirls, snake, you know, a couple possums, you know, you, you know, that, that's been in his grill messing with it and, and, and dead birds. And he said, give me about five minutes. And I'll have it clean. I say, listen, man, five minutes is not going to clean that grill or this smoker. You need a lot more time than that. He said, OK, so I leave. I go to my truck. I get some cleaning, you know, some cleaning agents to help him out a little bit. And I come back less than four minutes later. He has food on the same grill, laying on the grates, laying on the grates. And I said, hey, man, you can't put that food on there. I don't want to taste, you know, possum and, and, and all. You got, you got some nice looking chicken here. But, you know, first of all, you didn't season the chicken, which, you know, you didn't clean the grill or the smoker. So you're going to have residue from the smoker and the grill being out in the elements for the whole winter since last October. Here we are at the end of March, and you don't see nothing wrong with what you're doing. So he said, well, that's just more seasoning. No, 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 it's not. That's just nasty meat. I got plenty of seasoning that comes in a bottle ready to be used. What you have is a damn wreck. You have a mess. <clears throat> I said, you have a mess. You don't have more seasoning. Nope, nope, nope. You got a mess here. And I really don't want to, actually, I'm not going to eat your food. You know, I don't care how it comes out, what it is. I'm not going to eat it because it looks nasty. And I saw the before condition of your smoker. I'm looking at the after condition of your smoker and it looks the same. And you have put fresh meat on the same spots. I don't want my chicken ticks like rattlesnake you know, a crocodile or whatever you had that got into your grill during the off season. I don't want that. That is flat out nasty. Now, some of you don't see anything wrong with that and you leave your grill out through the whole winter season. Well, snakes, swirls, all this stuff is already in there, you know, and, and, and it, you just got to clean it. It doesn't take much to clean it. If you want food, to taste good, then have the food taste the way it was intended to taste. Chicken don't eat rattlesnakes, so it should not taste like a rattlesnake. You taste like what you eat. Everybody knows that. Well, then again, I doubt that. But now you know, because your boy Leon D here going to tell you about it. So when you don't clean things and clean behind you, it tells me that you really don't clean your oven or your um, stove. I know you don't. If you don't clean your grill, you don't clean your oven or your stove. So now you got two nasty people living together. You know, your wife ain't cleaning the stove. You ain't cleaning the grill. And you seem like you're very sociable and you want to have a lot of company. But um, when's the last time you ate ribs that taste like alligator? No. If I want alligator, I will eat alligator. I'm not going to eat ribs with the alligator smell because you had something crawl in your smoker 
during the off season. It could be a rat, a squirrel, you know, whatever you, you know, whatever you want to eat. We all got different palates. Things taste different, but because mine is very refined, it doesn't mean you can add sauce to it, barbecue sauce, and get rid of the original taste of the meat. No, that's just flat out nasty. So, if you pride yourself on having good quality stuff you want your seasoning to taste right nobody wants their salt to taste like pepper when i want to add pepper to food i add pepper i want to add salt i add salt i don't want to you know put pepper on a steak and it tastes like salt no so my whole thing is that you don't take care of things it would never be the same you must take care of the things you have the most joy in or get the most joy from. Whether that's your kids, which in my case is not the case at all, or that's your smoker, which is my case. So you want to go there and you want to make sure that everything is clean. And this is what I do. I use certain agents and I'm not saying go out and buy Traeger stuff for Traeger grills. You know Traeger's going to overcharge you. Everybody knows that. But what I do I have some stuff I buy and uh, you can get it at Home Depot Lowe's and uh, I turn the grills on and I bake off all the old residue. Now, remember, I clean my grills at the end of the season. So my even my grills got some kind of residue. So I bake it all off. I clean it. I scrub it uh, with a kind of a brittle brush or a, a steel brush. I get all the stuff off. And then, you know, I do all this while the grill is on. I do all this while the grill is on. Then what I do, I take a stick of butter and just run it across all the grates and clean it all off and have it go into my uh, grease drop bucket and it burns, it helps burns anything underneath. Even though I lift underneath, you never get it clean underneath like you can, you know, like you can on top of the grate. So I, so I, I burn everything off. And I do that for about a good 30 to 45 minutes with the, uh, with the smoker on. And you know what? When I put my chicken and put food on there, it tastes like what I put on there. I don't have to have or think I have a mystery meat because I do not have mystery meats in my repertoire. Some of you tasting skin from a rattlesnake that's eight years old. Because you never clean your smoker. Rain has been in there. And I keep all my smokers covered. I buy the covers for them when I buy the smokers. So all mine are covered. Even still, you get steam when it gets hot. There are things that get underneath the covers. So it's not like you put a cover on it. Nothing can ever go through. Now, I know a lot of you got holes in your stuff, holes in your covering, and holes everywhere else. I don't have any of that. Nope, 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 nope. You know, and some of you get squirrels that eat through the coverings and the squirrel got droppings and other stuff. You know, you got to just be nice and neat because if I come over and I see the stuff that you have and how you treat your stuff, I'm not going to eat your food. And don't try and convince me that I'm in the wrong when I know I'm in the right. So you got to just, um, you know, take a take a Saturday or a day after work and just spend an hour prepping just prepping your grill and your smoker for the upcoming season but also you know come september or october or november whatever whatever month you got to have some time where the weather's nice and and, and don't take a, a, a water hose and try and clean it you got to just mess up your deck you know don't be lazy and the reason i clean mine the way i clean mine because when i put the butter on it on the grates and the butter melts and and, and, and it also burns the old residue, and all that goes into my drip bucket. All of it goes to my drip bucket. I take the drip bucket out, put it in a plastic bag, tie it up, throw it in the trash, put a new liner in there, a new drip liner in there, or a grease liner. I'm all good. I'm ready. So, also, I don't leave pellets in my um, smokers all year long either. When I end my season... I drain the pellets out. I throw them away. So there's nothing in my pellet hopper. And I do that. Well, the main reason I do that, because if pellets get moisture, 
they're going to cause you auger to have some problems because moisture is going to come from the rain, snow, whatever, you know, wherever you're at. If it gets moisture, it's going to cause your auger to have problems. And if your auger got problems, that churns and churns and churns and kicks the pellets out to the fire to the fire pit, you're going to have a lot of problems. You are going to have a lot of problems. So I do a lot of little things, but those little things give me confidence knowing that when I put chicken on the smoker, it's going to taste like chicken coming off the smoker. A lot of you don't do that at all. And some people are just born. I mean, you know, you know, Lady Gaga said, born this way. Some of you just born nasty. And you can accept that. And when I barbecue or smoke food and stuff, which, you know, barbecue is just a sauce of smoking. But when I do all that, the one thing I take a lot of pride in is that I'm prepared. I am prepared to cook what I want to, knowing it's going to taste the way I want it to taste. Now, you know, so so those are just things that you just got to do and, 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 you know, let everybody in the neighborhood know you're doing it. Because um, it's like going to somebody's house with a cat. I know people say, I got a cat. The cat walk around the furniture, climb on the uh, kitchen countertop. But my cat's clean. I got news for you. Cats shed hair. I don't give a damn what kind of cat you got. You can have a mountain lion. They shed hair. Their hair flies around the kitchen, the living room, wherever. I do not eat people food who have a cat because they shed. And if you ever had a piece of cat hair in your mouth, and most of you just chew it up like spaghetti, don't think anything about it. But if you ever had it in your mouth, you will know where I'm coming from. And don't tell me how clean your cat is. A cat do not wipe their ass. They do not. Oh, most animals don't. Hell, a lot of humans don't. So, that's where I'm coming from. That's why I feel the way I feel about cats. I once bit into a cookie. Cat hair came out. The lady swore it was her daughter's. Oh, my daughter, she didn't have any kids. Yeah, no kids at all. So, I knew she was just nasty. So, I made it a monument to myself and a hell of a mental note when people do potluck and I don't do potluck at all. I don't do potluck because two reasons why I don't do potluck because people think they can cook something very, very good and they can't, they cannot. Somebody lied to them. You know, what you, can cook, you know what you can cook good. I'm going to tell you the easy reason, the easy way to find out. If you bring a casserole or something to a potluck and you take home 95% of it, it's not very good. Don't think that everybody got bad taste buds but you. Nope, it's not very, very good. So, that's the first reason. The second reason, because people who cats shed hair, they don't vacuum the carpet, the furniture every single day. But guess what happens every day? The cat sheds hair every damn day. Wherever they go, there's hair somewhere. And people like to tell me, my cat don't shed hair. Humans shed hair. Just comb it. And I guarantee you, you rub their cat damn near every day. So, when you make a decision to buy these big expensive smokers like I do, you got to make a decision to buy the cleaning ingredients to go with it. You got to just decide to do that. If you want to buy a small little smoker, that's fine if you don't want to clean it. But make sure the food you share is just with your family. Get them sick. They can deal with it. Matter of fact, they probably won't even get sick. Their immune system is used to you feeding them all kind of stuff in their body. Their bodies have a have a, uh, have a, adapted to your dirtiness. It's the same way when you look at my videos. 
I wear gloves. Because 99% of the time, when I cook food, smoke food, or use an oven or stovetop, somebody I know happens to drop by right around that convenient time a call being done. You know, when the food's done, hey, I'm in the neighborhood. Can I roll on by and just have a quick um, rack of ribs? No, you can get, a, you, no, 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 no. You're not getting a slab or rack. You can get one or two ribs and you can get some vegetables to go with it, but you're not going to get a whole slab. And even in the video, you see that I got six slabs of ribs. I'm prepping them ready to go, but you're not getting a whole thing of ribs. Not going to happen because the line at the door is just too damn long. Because people know that I'm very clean when I cook. So my whole point is when you when you when you get ready and you get prepped and stuff, clean your shit before you use it. It's not that difficult. Take a little pride in whatever you own. I got a neighbor, he'll wash his car for five hours and won't clean his grill for five minutes. And he wanna know why there are things sticking everywhere. He wants to know why. Well, because you're dirty. Ain't a whole lot of reasons why. Because you're dirty. It is what it is. So my whole point is, at the beginning and at the end of the season, clean it before you first use it and after you last use it. Hell, get your little badass kid to clean it. No harm in that. Make him a man or make her a woman and whatever and get her used to being clean. Make her, you know, get her, you know, get them used to doing things. They're going to eat the food. So why not they why not should they not help prepare the food? They're going to eat the food. But a lot of people say, "I got this." Cuz see in my life smoking and grilling, that's my job 100%. I don't even want my wife helping prep the food. I don't want my wife helping do nothing. Sit back, relax and enjoy what you're going to have because you're going to have an inexperience. It's not your routine barbecue from Mission Barbecue from these other places, Sun, Sunnies or wherever you want to go. It's not from some place in Texas. No, 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 no. I'm giving you an experience that you're not going to get anywhere else because that's the love I put into what I'm going to create. Every single barbecue is a new creation for me. You know, and I really enjoy it. If I don't enjoy it, I don't care what is in life. I don't do it. I don't do it. You do not want to eat from a mad barbecueologist. Oh, yeah, that's what I am. I'm a barbecueologist. I take a lot of pride in it. I spend a lot of time on it. And when I finish, you know your body ain't going to feel the same because it's going through a seizure because you're going to taste things that you have never tasted before in a way you never, test, in a way you never tasted before. So, if you're going to have friends over, impress them. You know, a lot of people are impressed when you give them free beers. I call it stupidity. Because I don't want to give you my barbecue before or after you've been drinking. You don't get the same experience. When you're drinking, you're hungry. Everybody knows that. You just want to eat. It really doesn't matter what it is. In some cases, it don't matter... Um, how it tastes, whatever. You just know that you got some fuel for the body. I don't want to give you no fuel. I don't want to give you no gasoline for your body. I want to give you an experience that you're not going to get anywhere else. So, that's what you got to do. And, 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 and for a lot of people, when you tell them why you don't want to eat their food or their barbecue, See, I'm not big on, you know, when you tell them you hurt their feelings. The hell with that. Hurt them. Hurt them. Make them better. You don't get better if you don't know what, if you don't know what is wrong, what is right. If you know what's wrong, correct it. You know, you know what's right, keep doing it. So don't go out there with that attitude, I'm going to hurt his feelings. If I feel that if you invite me over to look or help you smoke food, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't feel that you can handle the truth, just don't invite me. Because I'll be honest about it. You probably was number 10 on my list of things to do today anyway. 
And if I didn't get to you, I would have been cool with that. I would have been cool with that. If I get to you, consider yourself lucky. Because I don't have days in my life where I got nothing to do. And when I go to people's houses and I see things just not right, I really want to run away. Not just walk away. I want to run away. So, what you got to do, clean, use the cups and clean the agents, and then use the butter at the very last stage to give it a new a new residue and give it something new to target. And when I say just target, I want my chicken to be whatever it's going to be, but the butter makes sure that I got nothing. I, I don't have any of last year's food on it. I got none of your animals on it. No squirrels, no snakes, no possum, no dinosaur. I got none of that on that. Everything you taste is fresh from the year. And if you don't have butter, use some spam. You know, not, not spam the meat, but just spray. Use that. You know, because spam is nasty. Everybody knows that. Spam is poor people food. And if you eat it, you're poor. You may not know you're poor. You may not accept the fact that you're poor, but you are. So use some so use some, some spray or, or hell. You can run a little virgin olive oil, pour it into the grates. And, but, but the goal is to get it hot enough to basically it's boiling. When I clean my smokers, I normally get them around 300 degrees, 400 degrees, 500 degrees. It don't matter. But I want as much heat to touch those grates to burn off whatever was on there from the previous year. And like I said, I do that when I clean it. You know, at the end of the year, and then I do it again because your smoker has been sitting through the elements, and you don't know what got in there, what got on it. Well, sometimes you know, you just and sometimes you accept it. I cannot accept anything that doesn't look perfect. And when I get through cleaning things up, I want it to be perfect. So check out the videos, and you'll see how to clean. But it's not a one minute process. But then again, it's not an all day process either. Unless you make it. I mean, I've seen people grates so thick with skin from chicken, skin from snakes. It's so thick and so dark. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is mystery meat. I know what he put on there. But the mystery is what would it taste like when he takes it off? Because I see a whole lot of things I don't like. Okay, this is your boy Leon D. Clean your grill. Impress your friends. But more impressively, I mean, more importantly, Impress yourself. This is your boy Leon D. We talk next time. Peace.